Hi guys, this is the Laroy Studios. You're welcome to another episode of Android Programming. We'll be talking about uh, retrofit, and this time we'll be talking about the uh, user registration in uh, uh, in Android. Whereby we'll be using retrofit as our HTTP uh, library. Whereby we'll be getting the name of the user, uh, the username, password, and also uh, email address. So it's going to be a form whereby we ask the user to fill uh, all these fields. So after filling uh, these uh, details will be passed to the server. Uh, that is the back end, which is the server, and in which we will get uh, the details of the user, in which we have the username, uh, we have the username, we, have, we are going to have the name, uh, the email address, and uh, uh, the username of the of the particular user in question. So I'll be uh, breaking this uh, video into two modules. What about we have the backend, in which we'll be talking about uh, the the backend of the application, where we have the PHP scripts, uh, in which we'll be having the DB Connect and the insert PHP. And the second module will be the front end, which is the Java classes, uh, where we'll be using Android Studio to explain how to integrate uh, retrofit and the uh, details of this application okay i'll be moving straight to brackets but i have my dbcornet.php the insert.php i'll be explaining the dbcornet so we have our php first start where we define the host the user the password and also the database in question uh, the host is localhost. I decided to use uh, the same uh, string for the user, the password, and the DP just for for the sake of remembering easily. You know, retrofit login. Now we have our connect uh, variable where we declare our e my SQLI connect. We connect the host, the user, the password, and the DP together. So if there is an error, as they die, it's going to pop up unable to connect now we have the insert php this is where we're gonna this is uh the code that actually inserted the fields uh in question the name the username and password so we're going to check the server for the request method what well, the request method is post because we are posting stuff to the server we're going to get the post data by posting the name from uh the front end which is going to be the form we're going to post the username and we'll pass it into a variable username the same thing goes for the password and the email we're going to pass it into its appropriate variables we're going to check if the received values are blank that is some validation on the form if the name username password and email if they are empty you know we're going to echo to the console or to the screen that please fill all values else probably if there are stuff in it uh we're going to require once the db connect we need the, 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 uh, the database by calling the db connect scripts which i explained earlier and after that we're going to create an sql query to insert into database uh yeah you may need to change the retrofit users because it is the table that i created so you can decide to use another table if you wish. Now the query goes thus: select all from retrofit users where the username equals to the value of the username passed, or the email equals to the email. So you pass that to the SQL variable. Now you're gonna check that if the variable has some value from my SQL Live fetch array. That means username or email already exists. No. Okay. You have the MySQL Live fetch array where you're going to pass in the connection and also the query uh, pass. This is, the, in a nutshell, this is to check probably a user has been registered earlier. You know, that means two users cannot register twice. That's what that is doing there. Now you're going to check for some values or not. So if it's set, there's a check uh, 
variable which we got in from the connection and the SQL query, you're going to check that if the value, probably if the username exists, so it's going to echo to this, that the username or the email already exists. If not, that means that's a fresh user, so it's going to pass the data. So if the username is not already existing, you're going to create an insert query where we have the query go as this, insert into the retrofit users table, the name, the username, the password, and the email. Passing the values from the form, the name, username, password, and email gotten from the post data over here. Okay? You're going to try to insert the values to the DB. If my SQL-like query, you pass the connection, and you pass the SQL string uh, variable, which holds the details of the name, username, password, and email. You echo successfully registered. That is, if it actually uh, it's the database. Else, you echo, please try again. Oops, please try again. Probably there is an error somewhere. Now, you close the MySQL like connection. Probably if there is an error posting, that will be, which is for the topmost uh, post, that will be an echo that there is an error. So this is very simple, whereby you get to check, uh, get details from the form, you keep the strings, you get the value of the name, the username, the password, and the email. You pass them to, a, to, to variables, which is which are going to be used. You check if they are empty, which is this particular step. There must not be empty field. If there is, uh, you echo to them to fill up the values. If not, you call on the DB Connect, which actually connects to the database and the table. You check for this particular user trying to register as this particular user be registered before, which uh, holds on to this query, which selects the retrofit user from the username and fetch the array with a connection to check. So it gives that to the check variable. Now, if it's set, it's check up, it echoes an email or username already exists. If not, probably this is a fresh user. After checking up, uh, it inserts uh, the, the details into the table retrofit user. And uh, it echoes out successful, registered. If there's a, an error somewhere, it tells the particular user to please try again. And the MySQL -like connection closes up. That's straightforward. This is the backend code that will be uploading to the server in which we'll be using the HTTP call, the uh, URL that points to insert PHP right uh, in the Android Studio uh, Java classes, which we'll be talking in the second part of this video. So I want you to get a grip of how this PHP backend works, the DB Connect, and also the insert PHP that will be inserting the data into the database. Now, I would like to show uh, to you guys uh, the uh, the online server, which is the PHP my admin. If you notice this, I created the retrofit users, which is uh, the name of the table, and the retrofit users also as the table where I have the name, the username, the password, and email. These are the four fields used, so I will employ you to create that too. Uh, you can try it on a live server, and you can also try it on a local host, but I'm using the live server. That's the recommended uh, settings for this uh, test. It's better you use a live server. So it creates the name, the variable character type, username, password, and email in the retrofit users uh, table in which it must confirm with the DB Connect. You have to look at the DB Connect again. My host is localhost. My user 
is retrofit login that's the user of this database i gave it a password as well retrofit login you must have a password or use a root that means the password of this user and my database is retrofit login which you can see right there my data my database is retrofit login the table in question is retrofit users and uh, the structure of the table that's the fields right in the table we have four columns name username password and email all variable character data type all right uh, stay tuned for the second part of this tutorial where i'll be explaining in details the java files of this application